Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Drunken Gamer News, where we discuss recent happenings in the video game industry. I'm your host, Mike. We got a good show for you today. We got Cinco de Mayo coming up, and it's particularly fucking hot this day for whatever reason. Freaking by poor California weather. So that's why this week, I'm once again drinking one particularly flavorful beverage with those Ekkies, making this, once again, the most interesting show on the internet. Cheers. Ah. God, it took me four fucking times just to get that opening paragraph out for some reason. Ah well. Anyway, let's get right to this. I want to pose a quick question to the viewers out there. For those of you who work for like a big company that puts out, I don't know, stuff. Have you ever had a product that was just so bad, it's just so outright terrible, just ver the very worst thing that you can ever put out? Have anyone ever put out a product that bad? Anyone? Well, have you ever put out a product that was so bad that people were actually trying to sue you because your product sucked that much? Well, that's apparently what Sega and Gearbox have apparently gotten themselves into. Yes, the recently released Aliens Colonial Marines video game, which was met with a pretty harsh negative reception for being a complete train wreck of a game that sucked that sucked more than Scary Movie 3 through 5 combined, that they are now being sued by customers for false advertising. I'll spare you the legal mumbo jumbo re uh, regarding the whole thing, but the brunt of the case talks about how Sega misrepresented the actual product uh, excuse me, with demos and trade show appearances with footage that was actually not anything like what was experienced with the final product. In fact, the actual gameplay turned out to be worse than what was presented in the demos. The suit also points out that because the actual embargo date for reviews for the game, which is the date and time that outlets reviewing the game are allowed to post the reports without worrying about spoilers and spoiling the story for the readers or one outlet trying to get an unfair advantage by posting early, actually prevented those who pre-ordered or got the game early from actually knowing what the actual review scores were going to be and especially the fact that the actual gameplay was going to be completely different from what was experienced in the demos. As a result of all this, the suit is now seeking damages for all consumers that purchased a copy of Aliens Colonial, Colonial Marines on or before the release date. As of this recording, Sega has yet to comment to the lawsuit. Now, speaking as a journalism major, I learned about a lot a lot about false advertising and why it's a completely fucking retarded idea to advertise something that's completely different from what you're actually putting out. Clearly, somewhere during the course of the game's half a decade development cycle, something completely fell apart in the communication department. In fact, the, the communication pro pro aspect was probably thrown out the window from the start as the game was purportedly outsourced by Gearbox to several different companies during its development which was likely why the full product ended up being such a shambled mess. This was apparently done on Gearbox's part so that they could proceed with work on Borderlands, and more recently, Borderlands 2. But, getting back to the false advertising thing, I feel that if Sega had at least put out an updated demo that contained the actual game footage that would have been seen in the final product, <coughs> oh, pardon, this probably wouldn't be happening right now. In fact, they may have learned that the game sucked in its current form and took it back into the de development room, maybe even fired Gearbox from the whole project and found someone else to make it. The fact that they kept the reality of the game's development under wraps is just another example of how poorly all sides fucked up on this whole thing. Now, Gearbox should definitely feel responsible for all this, since they were given a fucking job to do and went behind Sega's back, to, Sega's back to push their own projects forward. It's not exactly good when your business partner finds out you've been slowing development on their product down by removing people from the team, but still getting paychecks on it for the equivalent of a whole team. And Sega should feel especially responsible for not keeping better track of the development of the game. I mean. How hard could it be to send one guy to Gearbox's offices to check on development once in a while? 
Then again, this is the same company that's been throwing Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog's lifeless corpse around for decades trying to appease to whatever furry minority still plays those games. Point is, both Sega and Gearbox screwed up royally here. And now both of them, this whole thing does indeed go all the way to court, are going to be royally screwed themselves. You can probably expect another wave of layoffs at Gearbox if this whole thing goes through. And speaking of bad games that were a result of Gearbox fucking up, Duke Nukem Forever! Yes, 2011's complete fuck-up of the revival of Duke Nukem is definitely one we all remember not so fondly in our hearts. However, where we have developers that do stupid shit, we also have modders that work to fix that stupid shit in a new segment called Game Mod of the Week. Actual logo pendy. This week, I bring credit to modders Gambini and Miko Sand. I hope I'm saying that that last name correctly. For their work on creating a mod for Duke Nukem 3D. Not just any mod though. What makes this mod spe special is that it actually makes Duke Nukem Forever a good game. The premise of it has been brought in for the classic Duke gaming format. An old school FPS game with lots of alien scumbags to shoot. Lots of areas to explore, and some pretty silly segments in its own right, like riding a donkey across the canyon. And best of all, Duke can actually carry more than two guns, just like he was supposed to. The whole thing is essentially designed to be representative of the original trailer that was shown for Duke Nukem Forever way back when, instead of the actual mess that kind of ended up be it ended up being. Of course. The mod isn't really without its quirks, just like any other mod out there. But the ones that stand out here the most are kind of the insta-kill bugs. I found myself getting insta-killed three times by buggy stuff. One from an apparently deadly door, and two while riding on the motorcycle by seemingly m nothing. I don't know, I'd have to go back through that section and see if there was anything that hit me specifically. So, there are still a few things that need to be polished up, ironed out, and all that what not, but that's what updates are for. For the most part though, the game does what Forever failed to do. Provide a proper tribute to one of gaming's most prolific badasses with a game that actually follows the original for formula and keeping the forced humor and awkward pop culture references to a minimum. And that's why Duke Nukem Forever 2013 mod is our mod of the week. Here's to Gambini and Sand. Ah, perfect beer to have on a warm day such as this. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll do it for this week's episode. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, and like our Facebook page to stay up to date with when new videos go up. Until next time, I'm your host Mike, the Drunken Gamer. Cheers.